Chapter 52, The Divine Shepherd. This chapter is based on John 10, 1-30. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Again Jesus found access to the minds of His hearers by the pathway of their familiar associations. He had likened the Spirit's influence to the cool, refreshing water. He had represented Himself as the light, the source of life and gladness, to nature and to man. Now in a beautiful pastoral picture He represents His relation to those that believe on Him. No picture was more familiar to His hearers than this, and Christ's words linked it forever with Himself. Never could the disciples look on the shepherds tending their flocks without recalling the Savior's lesson. They would see Christ in every faithful shepherd. They would see themselves in each helpless and dependent flock. This figure the prophet Isaiah had applied to the Messiah's mission in the comforting words, O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 9 through 11. David had sung, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalms, the 23rd chapter, verse 1. And the Holy Spirit through Ezekiel had declared, I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was weak. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 23, verse 16, verse 25, and verse 28. Christ applied these prophecies to Himself, and He showed the contrast between His own character and that of the leaders in Israel. The Pharisees had just driven one from the fold because He dared to bear witness to the power of Christ. They had cut off a soul whom the true shepherd was drawing to Himself. In this they had shown themselves ignorant of the work committed to them, and unworthy of their trust as shepherds of the flock. Jesus now set before them the contrast between them and the Good Shepherd, and He pointed to Himself as the real keeper of the Lord's flock. Before doing this, however, He speaks of Himself under another figure. He said, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The Pharisees did not discern that these words were spoken against them. When they reasoned in their hearts as to the meaning, Jesus told them plainly, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Christ is the door to the fold of God. Through this door all His children from the earliest times have found entrance. In Jesus, as shown in types, as shadowed in symbols, as manifested in the revelation of the prophet, as unveiled in the lessons given to His disciples, and in the miracles wrought for the sons of men, they have beheld the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, John chapter 1, verse 29, and through Him they are brought within the fold of His grace. Many have come presenting other objects for the faith of the world. Ceremonies and systems have been devised by which men hope to receive justification and peace with God, and thus find entrance to His fold. But the only door is Christ, and all who have interposed something to take the place of Christ, all who have tried to enter the fold in some other way, 
are thieves and robbers. The Pharisees had not entered by the door. They had climbed into the fold by another way than Christ, and they were not fulfilling the work of the true shepherd. The priests and rulers, the scribes and Pharisees, destroyed the living pastures, and defiled the well springs of the water of life. Faithfully do the words of inspiration describe those false shepherds. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, but with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 4. In all ages philosophers and teachers have been presenting to the world theories by which to satisfy the soul's need. Every heathen nation has had its great teachers and religious systems offering some other means of redemption than Christ, turning the eyes of men away from the Father's face, and filling their hearts with fear of Him who has given them only blessing. The trend of their work is to rob God of that which is His own, both by creation and by redemption. And these false teachers rob man as well. Millions of human beings are bound down with false religions in the bondage of slavish fear, of stolid indifference, toiling like beasts of burden, bereft of hope or joy or aspiration here, and with only a dull fear of the hereafter. It is the gospel of the grace of God alone that can uplift the soul. The contemplation of the love of God manifested in His Son will stir the heart and arouse the powers of the soul as nothing else can. Christ came that He might recreate the image of God in man, and whoever turns men away from Christ is turning them away from the source of true development. He is defrauding them of the hope and purpose and glory of life. He is a thief and a robber. He that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Christ is both the door and the shepherd. He enters in by Himself. It is through His own sacrifice that He becomes the shepherd of the sheep. To Him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear His voice, and He calleth His own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when He putteth forth His own sheep, He goeth before them, and the sheep follow Him, for they know His voice. Of all creatures, the sheep is one of the most timid and helpless, and in the East the shepherd's care for his flock is untiring and incessant. Anciently, as now, there was little security outside the walled towns. Marauders from the roving border tribes, or beasts of prey from their hiding places in the rocks, lay in wait to plunder the flocks. The shepherd watched his charge, knowing that it was at the peril of his own life. Jacob, who kept the flocks of Laban in the pasture grounds of Haran, describing his own unwearied labor, said, In the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from mine eyes. Genesis chapter 31, verse 40. And it was while guarding his father's sheep that the boy David, single-handed, encountered the lion and the bear, and rescued from their teeth the stolen lamb. As the shepherd leads his flock over the rocky hills, through the forest and wild ravines, to grassy nooks by the riverside, as he watches them on the mountains through the lonely night, shielding from robbers, caring tenderly for the sickly and feeble, his life comes to be one with theirs. A strong and tender attachment unites him to the objects of his care. However large the flock, the shepherd knows every sheep. Every one has its name, and responds to the name at the shepherd's call. As an earthly shepherd knows his sheep, so does the divine shepherd know his flock that are scattered throughout the world. Ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. Jesus says, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 31, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1, and Isaiah chapter 49, verse 16. Jesus knows us individually and is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He knows us all by name. He knows the very house in which we live, the name of each occupant. He has at times given directions to His servants to go to a certain street in a certain city to such a house, 
to find one of his sheep. Every soul is as fully known to Jesus as if he were the only one for whom the Savior died. The distress of every one touches his heart. The cry for aid reaches his ear. He came to draw all men unto Himself. He bids them, Follow Me, and His Spirit moves upon their hearts to draw them to come to Him. Many refuse to be drawn. Jesus knows who they are. He also knows who gladly hear His call and are ready to come under His pastoral care. He says, My sheep hear My voice, and I know them, and they follow Me. He cares for each one as if there were not another on the face of the earth. He calleth His own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And the sheep follow Him, for they know His voice. The eastern shepherd does not drive his sheep. He depends not upon force or fear, but going before, He calls them. They know His voice, and obey the call. So does the Savior shepherd and His sheep. The Scripture says, Thou leddest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Through the prophet Jesus declares, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. He compels none to follow Him. I drew them, He says, with cords of a man, with bands of love. Psalms, the 77th division, verse 20, Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 3, It is not the fear of punishment or the hope of everlasting reward that leads the disciples of Christ to follow Him. They behold the Savior's matchless love, revealed throughout His pilgrimage on earth, from the manger of Bethlehem to Calvary's cross. And the sight of Him attracts, it softens and subdues the soul. Love awakens in the heart of the beholders. They hear His voice, and they follow Him. As the shepherd goes before his sheep, himself first encountering the perils of the way, so does Jesus with his people. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. The way to heaven is consecrated by the Savior's footprints. The path may be steep and rugged, but Jesus has traveled that way. His feet have pressed down the cruel thorns to make the pathway easier for us. Every burden that we are called to bear, he himself has borne. Though now He has ascended to the presence of God, and shares the throne of the universe, Jesus has lost none of His compassionate nature. Today the same tender, sympathizing heart is open to all the woes of humanity. Today the hand that was pierced is reached forth to bless more abundantly His people that are in the world. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of My hand. The soul that has given himself to Christ is more precious in his sight than the whole world. The Savior would have passed through the agony of Calvary that one might be saved in his kingdom. He will never abandon one for whom he has died. Unless his followers choose to leave him, he will hold them fast. Through all our trials we have a never-failing helper. He does not leave us alone to struggle with temptation, to battle with evil and be finally crushed with burdens and sorrow. Though now He is hidden from mortal sight, the ear of faith can hear His voice saying, Fear not, I am with you. I am He that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. I have endured your sorrows, experienced your struggles, encountered your temptations. I know your tears, I also have wept. The griefs that lie too deep to be breathed into any human ear, I know. Think not that you are desolate and forsaken. Though your pain touch no responsive chord in any heart on earth, look unto me and live. The mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10. However much a shepherd may love his sheep, he loves his sons and daughters more. Jesus is not only our shepherd, He is our everlasting Father. And He says, I know mine own, and mine own know me, even as the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father. John chapter 10, verse 14 and 15, according to the Revised Version. What a statement this is! 
the only begotten Son, He who is in the bosom of the Father, He whom God has declared to be the man that is my fellow, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7, the communion between Him and the eternal God is taken to represent the communion between Christ and His children on the earth. Because we are the gift of His Father, and the reward of His work, Jesus loves us. He loves us as His children. Reader, He loves you. Heaven itself can bestow nothing greater, nothing better. Therefore, trust. Jesus thought upon the souls all over the earth who were misled by false shepherds. Those whom He longed to gather as the sheep of His pasture were scattered among wolves. And He said, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear My voice, and they shall become one flock, one shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 16, Revised Version. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. This is, my Father has so loved you, that He even loves me more, giving my life to redeem you. In becoming your substitute and surety, by surrendering my life, by taking your liabilities, your transgressions, I am endeared to my Father. I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. While as a member of the human family He was mortal, as God He was the fountain of life for the world. He could have withstood the advances of death, and refused to come under its dominion. But voluntarily He laid down His life, that He might bring life and immortality to light. He bore the sin of the world, endured its curse, yielded up His life as a sacrifice, that men might not eternally die. Surely He hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 through